Okay, let's talk about Azure Application Services and Application Service Plans. So I'm here in my Azure portal, and I'm going to start with an application service. So I'm going to click my little menu here, and I can look for application services, or I can go to all services. You'll notice, by the way, it's not here by default. You can favorite it. You can go to all services, and you can find web and mobile. And here in application management is our application services. So the other way you can do it, and this is probably going to be easier rather than navigating down here, is to come up here and do a search for app services. And there it comes, even though I misspelled it, it still finds it. Okay, so here's my application services. And I can create, manage, all, right, all the normal stuff we're used to doing with Azure. If I click my drop down to create, you'll see I actually have four or four options here. So I can create a web app, a static web app, a web app with a database, or a WordPress on app service. So I'm going to go ahead and do a standard web app, and we're just going to walk through the process to see what it looks like. Now, when we're talking about application services, realize we are always talking about web-based applications, right? So this is a way in Azure of hosting a web-based application. Without creating a virtual machine to run it, we can just run it just inside this app service if we don't need a full VM or container for that matter running the web app. So I'm going to click on add a web app and I'm going to find my resource group and I'm going to put it in my trial projects. And I'm going to give it a web app name. So I'm going to call this temp project. Okay, temp project. And notice it gives me a site here named temp project dash a bunch of garbage dot Canada Central blah, 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 blah. Now that'll change as I change locations. So I'm going to change this. I don't want to do this in Canada Central. I want to do this in West US. And then I can choose whether I want to run this as a, oh, let me back up here. I can set a unique default host name or not. If I don't set it, then this here has to be unique. Okay, so I can publish this as code or as a container. So if I choose a container, then I've got to choose my operating system, whether I want my container to run Windows or Linux. If I want it to run as code, then I can just select code here and then choose my runtime stack. So basically, what code am I using? .NET, Java, PHP, Python. I can pick whichever one that I want, and this is going to be the code stack that's going to I'll run my web application. So I want to put it in the language that I wrote my application in. So let's say I wrote it in Python, then I'm going to want to pick the appropriate version of Python. If it's a Java application, then I need to pick the appropriate version of Java, so on and so forth. So I'm going to do Python 312. And then underneath that, I can select the underlying operating system and then the region. Now, here's my pricing plan. Now, this is one of those things if I just go with this, this is going to create a pricing plan for me. And you see it's going to default to a new and ASP application service pricing for trial projects, blah, blah, blah. And then the pricing plan level, which right here I can run it with all my different pricing plan levels. Now, if I want to specify more, I'm going to set this as free at the moment. If I want to specify more, I can create new. I can also create a pricing plan before I uh, build my application, in which case I could select from the drop down and find my pricing plan here. We're going to take a look at that in a few minutes. And then zone redundancy. And let's move on to look at our other options. Now, I'm setting a free pricing plan shared infrastructure, so this is going to limit quite a bit what I'm allowed to do. But that's okay. I'm going to click Next, and here's my database. Now, for the database, I'd have to be running basic or higher. You know what? Just for the fun of it, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to set this to basic and click Next. And then I can choose whether I want to create a database or not. And then I can set my database engine. So uh, MySQL, Azure SQL, Cosmos. So uh, lots of different or four different database options. I can set the database server name and the database name. Now that's if I need to have a backend database tied to this web app. 
So because I'm doing this as cheaply as possible for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and switch that back to free, which means I don't get the option of doing a database, which is fine. So I'm going to go to my deployment, and then I can choose whether I want continuous deployment or not. Now, continuous deployment means I can tie my GitHub repository to this, and when I publish things in my GitHub repository, they can automatically deploy. And so you'll see here are GitHub settings, organization repository, branch, um, workflow configuration, do we want basic authentication? So this is for our continuous deployment. If I would go to enable and I can't do that because I'm running the free application service plan and I'm not going to jump back and forth a few more times. So if I enable it, then I set all of my, um, all of my options for continuous deployment. Now that does make it easier for me to update my web app when my developers are working on it, when they commit that code in the repository it can automatically deploy. So that has both positives and negatives, right? The positive is if we commit something and there's a problem in the code, will that just went live? Um, on the other hand, if there's not a problem, we can deploy it a, a whole lot faster and easier. So let's move on to our networking. I can choose whether I want to enable public access. So enable public access, obviously I'm going to need an IP address available. I can also turn that off. And then this network injection requires me to have a higher uh, level than my free one. But I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and leave that off for the moment. And then how do I want to monitor and secure this? Do I want to do uh, add application insights? Do I want to add Microsoft Defender? Both of these are going to add to my cost. So in real life, maybe something that you might want to look at. Uh, I love this. Um, application Insights uh, gives you an application performance management service for developers and DevOps professionals. Could be very, very useful. But again, I'm doing this free, and so I want to hold off on that. And then, of course, tags like we always have, and then review and create. So I'm going to let this run now. Be aware that not everything is supported in every region. So, for example, I think I chose West U.S. Yeah, I think I chose West U.S. A little bit earlier when I was playing with this, I did this as the region of West U.S. too. And it passed everything. And when I went to create, it said, by the way, I can't do this because West U.S. 2 does not support free applications. So that's one of the things you're going to want to keep an eye on. Not everything is supported everywhere. Okay, there we go. Our web app deployment is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's go back to all services. And I want to find my application service plans. And I'm just going to search for this. Oh, right there. Application infrastructure. Never mind, I just saw it. I'm not going to search for it. App service plans. And this shows me the app service plan that we just created. So I can come into my app service plan. I can review it, see my CPU memory usage, um, my data in, data out. I can look at my settings. So which applications are running this? By the way, a single app service plan can run multiple applications. That's just something to keep in mind. I can scale up my app service plan, scale out my app service plan, uh, play with my networking for my application service plan, and then look at my projects, which are my actual applications. So when I click on this, this takes me to my application. And let me wait for this to finish loading real quick. I can also get there, by the way. Um, get to this by going to, in fact, let me actually do this. We go to all, all services and application services. Now this is going to show me right here, all of my application services, the pricing tier, the location, the status, and then the service plan that it's associated with. So I'm going to click on my application service. And this is where I could manipulate my application service. So the default domain, the service plan, whether this is running or not, um, my projects, where it's hosted, my deployment center, networking configurations. So all of this is managed here. 
So if you are an application service developer, and I'm not looking at this from a developer standpoint, right? I'm looking at this from a sysadmin viewpoint. If you are a developer, then you would start loading your um, your application into your code into this application. If you are a sysadmin, this is the point at which you would kind of turn this over to the developer and say, okay, I've got your web service built. I've got the uh, application service plan set up. So everything is set up from our side. Now it's time for you to start working with your code and getting our uh, web application online. Remember, we do have lots of different settings that we can uh, look at. We can monitor its performance. We can look at the application service plan, so on and so forth. Okay. So from a sysadmin viewpoint, you are setting up an application a web app, or an app service, for your developers to work with their application service plan. Now, as a sysadmin, that may be all you do with it. As a developer, the developer then works on the code, gets it up and running. We'll probably come in here and review this from time to time, um, especially some of the statistics, make sure everything is running the way they want it to. As to who would set up the application service and the application service plan, that's probably going to vary by organ from organization to organization. Some of them are probably going to have their uh, sysadmins do it. Some of them may have the developers themselves do it. Either way, these are the basic steps you would take in setting up a simple application service.